All right, go ahead, get out. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm going backwards, Johnny, get out of the way. All right, now let's hook this thing up the way we had it. Hey, what's up, guys? Man, what a nice day it is today. Look at it, just look at it. Keep going that way. Keep going down there. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Johnny. Johnny. Put that put that in that. Put that in that hole. Just hook it right on there. Right there. Now get down. Wrap it around that mast. Here, just hook it to this. Yeah. Like I showed you. Yeah. Now pull forward. Tell them to drive out from under it. Just tell them to go. Go, go, go. go. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, that's enough. Let's see how it goes. Get out of there. It's going this time. Get out of there, Johnny. How about that? Oh, Crystal. How I love thee. Hey, what's up, guys? Man, what a crappy day out today. Cold, wet, windy. Anyhow, enough about the weather. It's supposed to be sunny today and 60. Uh, probably going to happen right before, like as the sun crusts the barn, right before it goes down, probably warm right up. And then go back to being cold. But anyhow, I'm standing here. Do you see that squirrel? I'm standing here next to this gorgeous piece of machinery. Crystal, 1983 Kenworth K100 C as in Charlie. And uh, man, just look at it. This truck has a special place in my heart. And uh, for that reason, this truck's getting the coolest engine on the property, the coolest transmission on the property, the coolest wheels and tires on the property, and the coolest driver on the property. And uh, as you know, we've been in the process of, as you know, we've been in the process of putting an engine in Crystal. 
3406E 5EK 750 horsepower. Now, you guys will be like, well, they never made a 750 horsepower 5EK. You're right. But uh, they are out there, and this is one of them. And, uh, well, we'll just have to see how that turns out. But anyways, I put an RTLO 18913A transmission in it. That's a heavy haul, 13 speed. And uh, the, front, the front differential is wore out. The power divider is wore out. Air ride front end, we got an air ride cab, spring ride drives, and uh, for now that's the way it's going to be. I do have an eight bag cut off. I just don't want to cut this truck. It's got a nice long wheelbase from the factory, and uh, I think it's going to be perfect. And uh, speaking of things that we're going to do to this truck, we're putting Trisha's eight inch miter cut single exhaust on because, well, we're broke. We spent uh, I'll tell you what I got into this uh, into this engine trans clutch and uh, miscellaneous crap. We got we got eighteen thousand dollars. Just what we've done right now. We got to get the drive shaft cut. It's a shade too long. It does fit in there, but if we put a load on it, it'll be too short. But for bobtailing, it was fine to get it going and get it moving uh, around the shop here. I got to do some airlines today. I got to do the transmission cooler and lines today. Get that transmission filled up. I don't want to run it anymore until I do that. Um, start running some uh, coolant lines, with radiator, upper hose, lower hose, some heater hoses get blocked off. Um, put in a coolant level sensor, wire that in today, wire in the, uh, throw over the wiring for the uh, AC high pressure switch and that sort of thing, jump back in the cab, start tracing down. Uh, there's a boost. I really wish I had that other engine, but I sold it. There's a boost uh, gauge in here, but it's it's electronic, not mechanical. I may just swap that out to a mechanical gauge and run a, run a line in there. Um, also need to... Uh, well, that's not true. I just lied. Fuel pressure is electric, not mechanical. So I need a fuel pressure sending unit. I have a boost line, but nowhere to put it. I need to plumb that in. Uh, I think I can put it right over on the turbo if there's enough hose to get there. Um, put an elbow on that turbo inlet or outlet and bing, bang, boom, Bob's your cousin. Uh, bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle. But we need to do uh, we need to do all that today. So I think what I'll get done first, I'll get the cab jacked up get it blocked up, get underneath, try and figure out the plumbing for that cooler and a way to mount it, get that done, fill the transmission up. While I've got the cab up, I've got some new 530 seconds airlines, uh, four line different color airline kit. We'll string that up, get that, uh, get that down on the transmission plumbed up, get those tubes up into the cab and get that 13 speed shifter handle plumbed in. So that'll be done. We'll also run that hot, the hot air line into the uh, dryer. We'll get a look at some of these other lines that are down there. I think we got to run the lines to the governor. We got to put a re uh, reservoir line and a uh, um, the the uh, dryer line on, and uh, that should be that. Um, let's see what else. Okay, well anyways, talked enough, let's get after it, eh? Let's see what the hell we got here. Ouch. Hit my freaking head. Okay, so this is going to be the one I want to use there. I want to use it here. Nope.
Why? We'll fix that in a second. Let's make sure this is going to work. Okay, yep, it's gonna work. All right, let's go and have some breakfast. Oh, we'll be right back out. All right, a couple things we gotta reorganize here. This is annoying and uh, I don't like it. These things hanging down on me are pissing me off too. But baby steps I guess. If I use a half inch wobbler I can get them right from underneath. I'm gonna have to get some of these sockets fixed. These are my outside sockets and they're getting wore out. guys ah, you know O'Reilly's is really starting to let me down I've been using them for a lot of stuff and not using Fleet Pride because I hate having to wait a day to get the stuff I ordered from Fleet Pride but uh, lately something's changed and he's hardly fine O'Reilly's got himself a girl and I want to make a mine oh sorry uh, but yeah, lately, Riley's been letting me down. I called for five gallons of 50 weight synthetic transmission oil. I mean, I bought it from him a bunch of times before. It's always in stock. Now, suddenly, life has new meaning to me. Oh, sorry. Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, I can't seem to uh, score. I'm not sure what in the hell is going on. But now I gotta wait to put transmission oil in this thing. I do have one gallon, uh, so I will. I will use what I have, which will be better than having nothing in there. Um, but it's just annoying, you know, it's annoying. Okay, let's see. We'll take, uh, hope you guys can see me over there. Or not me, really. But I hope you can see what it is I'm doing. I bought this cooler, this oil cooler from, uh, 
Amazon. It was cheap, 100 bucks. And uh, it looked like it was about the same size as the one I needed. And I figured I could probably whip up some, some, uh, uh, I figured I could whip up some quick mounting and get the thing installed. Now you don't have to have this. You can uh, block these off. Uh, but you know why? If you're going to be pulling, you know, you might as well cool out. You know what I mean? Um, these lines are a little bit long. And so I'll probably... I will probably uh, shorten them up. But I'm gonna get a look at them and see what I think first. I could just put a clamp right here. We'll see what the other one looks like when it's on. Now each minute that I'm laying down here with my hydraulic cylinders, you know, under pressure, I'm gonna be regretting it later. So I'm going to move my face over and lay down. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, for now, I'm going to leave these configured uh, the way I have them. And uh, we'll, hang them, we'll hang them from right there because I don't know if I'm gonna like where this thing is uh, and I don't wanna cut these off yet uh, I'll just put a zip tie over there hold them out of the way but uh, yeah I like the way it looks I may take these back down and move these because these used to be uh, these used to be held up there this one needs to be turned loose that one is entirely too long. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to go get some lube and I'm going to get some zip ties. I'm going to get some cutters. And then I'll come back down here. Oh, I didn't bring any oil down here. That sucks. Okay, so this needs to go up there. Let me get up there and just see what I can do with that for right now. This originally was up here over the trans and I think that's smart because you don't want a whole bunch of important shit uh, underneath the truck right so this probably goes something like this here this here noon at the chemical plant to be it goes right here so we'll uh, we'll get a tool we'll stick it right there let's see where that other one comes from see this is just uh this is a bunch of you know trying to remember how they had things routed uh, you know what all that stuff did the idea today is to get the cooling system and the air system working uh, air system could have waited 
but since I was working on the trans anyways, uh, I just decided it was probably a good time to do it. And this here, I think probably, probably was meant to go over there. Let me see if I get a shorter piece, because maybe I can just come right through here, you know, like this, put this here. And then I can just continue this over, you know, with just a short piece, maybe a foot. Let me see what I got. All right, so it turns out I found a part that was the correct length. Uh, and when I say the correct length, I mean the right length to get me by. All of these lines are going to have to be redone. Uh, money permitting. I got a lot in this truck right now and I just need to get it rolling and, uh, and get it to that uh, start run drive so I can finish the goal. And uh, then I think I'll call a mobile hose guy and just spend a couple grand and have him make all these hoses it's a lot of work, a lot of money, and uh, a lot of time. But uh, let's see, I think I need to make it this way. All right, I don't want to be a persnickety whore. We'll be a persnickety whore together. Okay. make this one so now I should be making these connections Getting this old truck ready to pull the air. First time in a long time. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it working and then we're gonna get after making new lines. Uh, because, well, it's better to know needs fixing ahead of time uh, rather than and what works and if the routing's right before you make a bunch of hoses this stuff is expensive and uh, yeah Some of the things we've got to do, we've got to wire in the speedometer, which we may take right out from underneath there and may make it go right over here. And then uh, the other thing we're going to do is our backup lights, and it's probably this, but we'll have to wait and see. There's also some other stuff down here, so not gonna get super crazy uh, quite yet. We may just run a piece of plastic line up here too. I think we will. Rather than dick with this, we'll get a, a nylon uh, 
uh, push the lock in there and we'll use we'll put one in up here as well and uh, yeah all right so what I'm doing right now is taking the fittings off of the air governor uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to hook it up or what it went to, but now that I know, I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of today. So this middle one is where the where the uh, air governor tells the uh, air dryer to cycle. Be right back. I'm try and use. I'm going to try and use this push lock 90 in here. Um, I don't know if I can get it screwed in all the way with the bolts in. Um, fortunately, uh, that's the nature of the beast when you're trying to use a 90. Okay, so that's kind of how you do it. And then you take your, your line. We don't have a whole bunch of this stuff, but... We do have enough to get that done. Take your line and cut it off. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you had a fast Stanley blade out here, which we should have had, let me go get one. So, what I'm doing now is I'm going to make this, uh, reference line which is what tells the air compressor to shut off uh, I'm going to make it meet up with the line from the reservoir let me clean it out okay try this 7 16 first and then we'll hook us up with that 90 and this thing is ready to make air uh, we do have to adapt the uh, transmission air first though okay good enough and uh, we'll tighten on this thing here good all right this bolt back in. I need to put a little little lubricant, little lubricant shot in there. Lubricant. So, almost done with the air governor. Once and for all, just tighten this last bolt. Put a little lube on there so it won't stick in the in the threads anymore. And uh, there you go. Bing bang boom. Bob's your uncle. That's done. All right, so we need to tighten up this fitting. Okay, that's good. So the whole air system is ready. Uh, we'll need to do some zip tying, but now let's uh, let's move back over there, and we'll uh, put that. We'll get a ninety. And we'll stick that uh, transmission main air feed line on. And then I don't know what. Oh, I do know what those are. Let's uh, let's put you right over here. And uh, we'll be working on this valve right here. Be right back. All right. Get up in here. Take this off. Uh. I wish there was a side port in there, but there's not. So this is a push to talk, push to leak, push lock, whatever you want to call it. And then what I'm going to probably do is is uh, put a 90 on there. Problem is it's hard to put a 90 on uh, because you can't get it turned. You know, so I'll have to take that bottom one off, put this 90 on. And then this 90 is just going to make this do this, which, I mean, is fine. 
Uh, I just don't know. I wish this was would just come in from the other side, you know. If I had a push lock 90 coupler, I would use that. Right now we got these dual cables going up there and then a uh, well this is a three and this is a two and this is a single not really sure what's up with that now I'd love to say oh man it's perfect because I don't hear any leaks but uh, air leaks are in my my realm that I can't really hear uh, let's see We have 100 pounds in service rear. We don't have any in service front. So that just means that it, it doesn't go over there, which is fine. I know how to make that happen. Okay, so without a tractor protector, it's not gonna air up. So let's get one real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, well that's not gonna work. That was dumb. <laughs> Dang it, it's smaller than that. Be right back. All right, well, finding the right fitting sometimes is really a pain in the ass, so. We went with the push lock. Probably not my first choice. Uh, but it'll do the job. And then we'll put a new one of these on with all new fittings and hoses anyways. Okay. Now we're going to cut this off right here. So, that's going to be fine for now. We'll just tuck that down in there. <clears throat> Keep water out of it. Now we should be able to layer that up. Yeah. Okay, what the hell's leaking now? Why? Okay, so apparently that ain't how it goes. Me reconsult. All right, so to start the day off, I installed the trans cooler. Now, I haven't cut those lines down yet. I'm going to make sure that everything's the way I want it before I do that. So they're just zipped up out of the way. Also, need to make some lower brackets for that so it doesn't just break off of there. Uh, then I went ahead and Brand new air lines to the transmission uh, from the shifter and uh, tested that out and we've got negative uh, range select so I think we've got just a hung up slave valve so we'll pick one of those up. I also uh, rigged up the uh, air system and the uh, air dryer and eliminated some of the garbage left in there. This little hanger right here I'm gonna make a new one. It's just a, it's a Schrader valve for filling the, the uh, 
the uh, forward uh, main air tank. Then we uh, wired in the um, fan solenoid. We installed and wired the coolant level sensor. Uh, we zip tied some stuff out of the way. I don't know what this is yet, so I'm not going to remove it. I do know what this stuff is. This stuff's coming out tomorrow. I just didn't have the heart today. But uh, we, we zip tied up some wiring, so that's pretty clean looking. Uh, I didn't I didn't run it today. I also didn't um, hook up. I didn't zip tie up that main wiring harness yet. I left enough slack for it. I also got to hang these yet in a permanent location. Uh, haven't done that yet, but I've got all of the engine wiring um, done. I also let's go to the other side. Also started doing cooling system. Uh, I had some some two and a half OD stainless, uh, so I matched it up with some two and a half ID silicone hose on the top, and uh, I didn't have any more, so I just used black on the bottom. Now it is a little bit, it is a little sideways. Uh, I should put about a 30 degree elbow in there, or a 20, but I'm just going to use a straight. It'll be fine. I do need an exhaust. Uh, the one from the Freightliner came down too hard, and uh, which I don't understand that. Oh yeah, I do, because it came straight down through there and went under the truck. Or this engine set higher up in the in the frame, or it, it came over this way first. Yeah, it came over this way first, and this one can't do that. Uh, it needs to stay uh, away from the battery box. So it needs to come to about here and actually, let me just, maybe I'm just a dumbass. I could, nah, it's gonna be too low. Uh, it needs to come over, but not quite that far. And uh, it can't come down far enough, uh, if you can see that. So I need one that has a little bit less of a bend. No big deal. I can cut that one up and re-weld it. But uh, I still have to do the cab jack lines. I'm not worried about that today. I started thinking about plumbing. Uh, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to plug this one. Uh, I don't really know. But I think I'm going to plug that one. And I think I'm going to... Um, just put a cap on both of these. Uh, alternator wiring's in. I do need to zip tie that. I need to locate what these things are for. I've got to find the fuel pressure, um, the wiring for the fuel pressure sensor, and uh, get a sensor for that. I need to find the uh, coolant temp. Uh, I think that's coolant temp there, so I need to find the, the coolant temp sensor wire from the truck and hook that up. Uh, there's also something, could be a coolant temp sensor in the front. I need to do the, uh, the little bleed line. I need to hook that up. I need to hook up, uh, I don't know what that goes to, that one incher. Um, I think, I think it used to go to one of these. I think that this one, I think this one goes up there. So we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll rig that up. Uh, that's kind of the fill one, you know. Uh, I don't know. We'll look on one of the other cats and see. But I think that that hose up there goes down to that bottom one down there. Or maybe it's supposed to go into one of the back ones. But uh, I'm not worried about that yet. Uh, but I am going to be doing that tomorrow. I'm going to try and get after the bottom hose tomorrow and figure that out and uh yeah maybe i've got some more of that three inch pipe uh maybe i can cut some bends and and uh mock it up and maybe get the tig welder out and tig weld that up and then tig weld those uh hot and cold tubes as well and then i can be done with the radiator and uh get some coolant in this thing uh I do need to, uh, I still need to do the speed sensor. This one's broke off. I don't know if it's broke off or just mangulated a little bit. I may be able to 
no i'm just going to take that out and put a different one in uh i can't tell uh neither one of those are threaded but we'll just get a two wire pulse width modulation uh pickup a little magnetic pickup and uh hook that wire up and we do have to build those bottom brackets but we didn't have any we didn't fill the transmission today because i only have a gallon and they didn't have any so that should be here tomorrow uh yeah so anyways guys i'm gonna put the cap down on this thing i'm gonna put this uh put this track mat in the shop and go inside because i am whooped tomorrow's supposed to be a nice day maybe i'll get to have my shirt or my coat off and get a little sun and i'd love to have the cooling system done tomorrow uh if i get the cooling system done tomorrow uh i'll probably start this engine up and uh get it up to temperature and uh maybe see if it'll move a little bit forward and backwards and uh then after that i think the only thing i really need to do uh before a test drive is just verify that i can get working brakes and uh, uh take it for a spin getting close i'd love to oh i gotta build the top there's a bracket i need to build uh so i'll have to do that tomorrow as well there's a bracket that that bolts to the top of the radiator um and to the top of the engine and it keeps the radiator from swaying back and forth beating on the uh, fittings so i do need to i do need to fab that finish the upper and lower radiator hoses finish welding the um, hot and cold side turbo piping come up with a plan for uh, some sort of air filter and then try and figure out some exhaust at least get a stub pipe off the turbo and out the back i i should just hang the exhaust brackets and hang trisha's exhaust on there and uh and just get that thing out of the way so that's probably what we'll do anyways and we'll see you